Dominica sets out to rebuild confidence in the economy after Roosevelt starts victory in last week's election. The last day on the job for Mauricio Macri as Argentina prepares for a new president and a new direction. And five people are dead and at least eight remain missing after a volcano erupted on a tourist island in New Zealand. From the headquarters of Talisir English in Quito, Ecuador, this is From the South. I am Doris Polo. Life is getting back to normal in Dominica after the tense election campaign last week. The Labour Party won a sweeping victory on Friday, giving Roosevelt Scarrett a third term as Prime Minister. All the observer missions, including that of the OAS, said the vote was free and fair. Our correspondent in Rosso, Alejandro Kirk, brings us more. There is greetings from uh, the seaside, from the bay side, where the news today is that uh, this cruise ship uh, docked in this political statement in itself because it it's, um, it's a testimony of uh, the stability, tranquility and peace that is reigning in the country. These ships were coming in a, in a rate of about three to four a week and they stopped after the violence that was uh, ignited by the opposition right-wing party, the United Workers' Party. This is over. The victory was, like you said, so sweeping that and, and this, the, also the statements by the observer missions left no room for doubt about who won the elections and the elections were fair, free and fair. So uh, the city, the small town of uh, Rousseau is blooming again today. Vendors are selling their stuff uh, all uh, around the, uh, the, the ship. The, the, this, um, Bayside, where many of them are putting up their tents, they're selling t-shirts, they're selling uh, food, the visitors are enjoying this, the island, touring it, going to the falls, uh, going to nature, which is, you know, the attractions of this island, and also this um, reinforcement of uh, self-assurance that the country is at peace and that uh, this important source of income for uh, Dominica uh, will keep uh, coming in and there will be no more disruptions. That is at least the hope that we have for now. Um, obviously, the conspiracy against Prime Minister Skerritt is still going on. They want him out and they will keep trying from abroad, from the external sources that they have to try to overthrow him. But so far, uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be very easy there. They came here to hear just one word, fraud. These were supposed to be the allies, the organization of American states observers. Behind all this, there was the vivid memory of Bolivia, where a lightning coup of state was based exclusively on an OAS preliminary report. But in Dominica, they were prepared. Here, with just around 30,000 voters, it was impossible to claim fraud without accurate evidence. Astonished? the bad losers turned into rich. The question I'm asking is this, what is the validity of these elections? And will you say something about whether these elections are valid or not? Major recommendations that were made that you should be looking at and make recommendations to address those two problems. One by one, the electoral missions discarded all complaints. We are here to tell you that we observed the electoral process and that we are satisfied that on election day, the people who voted, their votes reflected the will of those who voted. In concluding, it is our considered view that the results reflect the collective will of the people who voted and that the 6th December election was conducted in accordance with the laws of Dominica. Our team visited 200 of the 15 polling stations 
and none of our members reported any irregularities. After a problem-free polling day, because of these situations, we asked party agents whether they had any observation, complaint or something to say, and they all said they had no complaint and that everything was fine. This did not prevent the right-wing candidate from going on with his regime change script, even though walking on moving sands. We, we are saying to the people of Dominica, we need now to demand fresh elections, because as far as we're concerned, this illegitimate result renders the election null and void, and it renders the government null and void. We not recognize this government. It was this kind of order and tidiness, even in a rural community like this, what neutralized any attempt to delegitimize the process. There was no single complaint from polling stations. Dominicans are a peaceful and religious people, mixing politics, religion, music, and dance. A striking contrast with the opposition calls for war prior to the election day. We will not hypocritically talk peace when the justice of the people of Dominica is being injured and when the rights of the people of Dominica are being set aside. On Friday 6, ballot boxes arrive for the final count and Dominica's map gradually turns into labor red. Party members began celebrating early. The Prime Minister wasted no time in addressing the nation to prevent last-minute surprises. In communities, families, and at the national level, there must, from tonight, be peace. The essential healing and rebuilding from the events of the last few weeks can only take place in an atmosphere of restraint, respect, and calm. And that is what I call for, restraint, respect, and calm. Next day, and with the Bolivian ghost gone, Skerritt would open up personal feelings to foreign correspondents. It's a vindication um, of all of the uh, persecution and attacks and character assassinations and, and, and all of the involvement of uh, a number of external actors in our elections. Um, I think uh, this, is a, this is the ultimate vindication uh, in politics. Um, and I, I think the people, the voters of Dominica, um, recognize that. He also shared some thoughts about the OAS and its Secretary General, Luis Almagro. The OAS has lost its importance and its, its relevance. Um, and the respect that it has had. And for the OAS to come back to where it was prior to Mr. Amalgo taking office, he has to be removed. If he's re-elected, my friend, we'll be on to the, um, the Latin America and uh, American group in, and you remember, remember? CELAC was formed because of the issues we have with OAS, eh? Well, was cautious. Skerritt was sworn in just hours after official results had been published, calmly showing who is in charge in the country. It is probably not the end of all conspiracies, but it is surely a signal of peace, at least for now. Jesus Romero and Alejandro Kirk, Telesur, Dominica. Continuing with some Caribbean news, Grenadian Senator and Minister of State with responsibility for the National Disaster Management Agency, Winston Garraway, has been arrested and charged for assaulting a journalist. The victim is said to be reporter Calistra Farrier. Police charged Garraway after three months of an investigation. He will appear in court on summons from the police prosecution's department. It was a simple St. Kitts and Nevis former Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas has threatened legal action against British newspaper The Daily Mail for a story he describes as totally false, malicious and libelous. On Sunday, Daily Mail published that Dr. Douglas was detained at Gatwick Airport three weeks ago after he tried to leave Britain with 70,000 euros in cash. The former PM, now UK Privy Councillor, denied being arrested at the airport on November 16th or at any time. He said the article is receiving the attention of his lawyers and accused St. Kitts Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris of peddling the falsehood.
Statement of endorsement. Moving to Bolivia during the weekend, the National Congress of the Movement Towards Socialism Party named Eva Morales the director of their electoral campaign. The Congress resolved the or to maintain unity among the social movement members and leaders in order to organize the upcoming elections. The mass is demanding that the Legislative Assembly begin a trial against Jenny Nanez in which ministers, the police and military will be probed for genocide and crimes against humanity. Monday is the last day in office for Argentina's outgoing President Mauricio Macri. On Tuesday, Alberto Fernandez and Cristina Fernandez will be sworn in as President and Vice President. Edgardo Esteban reports. We're at the end of a cycle here in Argentina with the last day of President Mauricio Macri's government. He's not made any self-criticism in his final appearances, and that includes a 45-minute documentary shown yesterday in which Mauricio Macri presented the key moments of his presidency, but it didn't acknowledge the profound crisis in which he leaves Argentina. One symbolic sign of the change can be seen here in the Plaza de Mayo. They've taken down the barriers that separated the square, where the mothers of the disappeared, for example, always marched, from the presidential palace behind. So today, it becomes once again a square for all the people. And this shows the expectations here for the swearing-in of Alberto Fernandez, which will take place tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the Congress. After that, at 6 o'clock in the evening, there will be a party for the people here in the square with both Alberto Fernandez and Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner taking part to celebrate the beginning of this progressive government which is generating so many expectations amongst the people of Argentina. We'll take a short break now when we come back. News on Algerian youths protesting across the country. We'll have more on this after the break. Welcome back. Two people have been rescued on Sunday, two days after being buried in a six-story building collapse in Nairobi, Kenya. The death toll has risen to 10 as search teams continue to look for survivors. Reports say people trapped in the debris were screaming for help, but the sounds of their voices died down as time passed. <laughs> The governor of Nairobi, Mike Sonko, has appeared in court to answer corruption charges leveled against him. Sonko pleaded not guilty to over 30 charges of money laundering, receiving bribes and conflict of interest. He is the latest top official to be charged on corruption in Kenya and is alleged to have benefited from a 3.5 million irregular procurement transaction. When President Uhuru Kenyatta was elected into office in 2017, he vowed to fight corruption, and several officials have so far been charged. Thousands of Algerian youths have continued to protest against the ruling elites and upcoming elections. The youths are not happy with the holding of elections scheduled for December 12th, since most of the candidates come from the old administration. Algerians have been demonstrating twice a week since February, which led to the resignation of the former president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika. After his resignation, protesters kept on striking, calling for all the officials who worked under him to resign. I think it's a continuity of the system, since the heads are the heads of the old system that was rejected by the population. Moreover, it's empty political programs. So here we talk about things that are unachievable. With our economy, it's like selling dreams to little kids. In Guinea-Bissau, outgoing President Jose Mario Vaz has announced his support for ex-Prime Minister Omaro Sissoko Mbalo, ahead of the second round of elections on December 29th. Sesoko Mbalo will face off against another former prime minister, Domingo Simoe Pereira, with campaigns set to begin on December 13th and end on December 27th. Elected in 2014, Vaz failed in his bid to get re-elected, coming fourth in the first round with 12.4% of votes. Sissoko Mbalo came second with 27.6%, while Pereira scored 40.1%. Yeah. 
in Latin America, the main streets of Bogota turned into a giant stage at the weekend where famous Colombian musicians performed in support of the national strike that has lasted more than three weeks. More protests and stoppages are planned for the coming days. This is where people usually come to practice the sports on Sundays. Now it's a stage for artists to protest. In this song for Colombia, actors and more than 40 groups, including well-known singers, joined the national strike. We are here as a part of the strike, giving courage to it, believing that if we unite, we are stronger. We must unite to fight, because we want a better country, a better present for everyone. Thousands have come to accompany them. They are expressing their dissatisfaction with the situation in the country and with politicians who they believe are undermining peace, like the former president, Álvaro Uribe. We have come together because we believe that we have many reasons to march. We believe that the protest is just because it is not a matter of the right or left or of political parties. We are here for dignity because we believe that people have to be heard. Artists and citizens demanding better health and education and no more murders of social leaders, no more violence. The mobile stage traveled seven kilometers, raising their voices through music. We want the government to adopt a different attitude. We want people who are willing to listen and change things because the people are asking them in a peaceful and non-violent way. In this way, we support what is going on and want to keep people's spirits up. There is no sign of the strike coming to an end. New demonstrations are planned in the coming days. With pot banging pants and other protests, demanding respect for human rights, the environment, diversity and economic improvements. Coming up, protests against the government's pension reform in France continue. We'll unpack this and more after the break. Welcome back. The French High Commissioner for Pensions held a final meeting with some union leaders hoping to end the transport strike currently gripping the nation. On Wednesday, the government will present the full details of its plans for a single points-based pension reform that does away with dozens of more advantageous plans enjoyed by workers. Critics of the plan say it will effectively force millions to work longer or face curtailed benefits. President Emmanuel Macron's determination to push through the reform sparked a nationwide strike that's been ongoing since last week, effectively crippling the public transport system for five days straight. Commuters struggled to get to work as most of the system was shut down on Monday. This includes a bus strike in Paris where just two of the 16 metro lines were operating as normal. Hundreds have protested outside India's parliament on Monday over the government's legislative proposal to give citizenship to religious minorities from neighboring countries, but not Muslims. The Citizenship Amendment Bill provides that Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis, and Christians fleeing persecution in Muslim-majority Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan can be granted citizenship. Currently being debated, Muslim organizations believe it forms part of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's agenda of marginalizing India's 200 million strong Muslim minority. It's a claim Modi denies. The Indian constitution, they are not committed to the Islamic court. They are not committed for the security, except the movement is on, the movement will continue and will fight it. Shops, schools and offices were shuttered in the Palestinian city of Hebron as protesters clashed with security forces on Monday. 
Demonstrators are opposed to a plan to expand a Jewish settlement activity in the Flashpoint city. Fatah, the party of Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, called for the strike on Saturday to confront the settlement offensive targeting the city and its old town. Last week, Israeli Defense Minister Naftali Bennett ordered his office to begin the planning process to convert a former Palestinian market into settler housing, potentially doubling the number of Israelis in the West Bank city. At least five people are confirmed dead, and the eight remain missing after a volcanic eruption hit a New Zealand tourist destination. About 50 tourists were believed to be on the island when the eruption happened. 23 were rescued, and it is feared no one else survived the eruption. A no-fly zone has been declared over the area. 26-year-old South African activist Zozibini Tutsi has been crowned Miss Universe in an event filled with colorful displays. Tunzi is the first black woman to take the crown in eight years. According to her biography, she is engaged in the fight against gender violence and is an advocate for natural beauty. The 26-year-old earned cheers during her closing speech, a new segment of the competition in which she talked about wanting to empower black women who look just like her. I grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me, with my kind of skin and my kind of hair, was never considered to be beautiful. And I think that it is time that that stops today. I want children to look at me and see my face, and I want to, them to see their faces reflected in mine. Thank you. And with that, we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at tellusurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Tellusur English, I'm Doris Polo. Thank you so much for watching.